All right, welcome back. I'm Paulo Shakarian. I'll be your instructor for this lecture. And here we will look at thinking fast and thinking slow. Here are the lesson objectives. Now, one note about this lecture is this uh, reading in Scientific American, an associated book by uh, Daniel Kahneman, is uh, the reference for this. A little bit history behind this concept. Daniel Kahneman's actually a uh, coming from the field of psychology, and thinking fast and thinking slow is an idea from this field that happens to apply very well to artificial intelligence, especially in the more contemporary interpretations of this topic. So we've added this lecture because really in understanding kind of this dichotomy between perceiving and reasoning, uh, system one, system two really, you know, helps you understand that better. So what is it? Well, taken directly from the source, system one operates automatically and quickly with little or no effort of voluntary control, while system two allocates attention and effortful mental activities including complex computation. So we can think of system one as being quick things that we react to. You might hear the term, I just know that off the top of my head, giving a quick answer. Uh, when you memorize facts and you can uh, say them back really quick, when you instantly recognize your friend's face and say their name, these are all examples of system one. Where system two, on the other hand, this is, hey, I'm going to give you a scientific paper I need you to read. I'm going to give you a calculus problem you need to work through. You have to sit down and you have to go through things step by step. That's an example of system two processing. So let's give an example. What's the color of this circle? So boom, right away, everyone's saying, well, it's green. And so how long did it take you to think about it? Probably not long at all, because you learned when you were a very young child that this was green. Can you explain your answer? Chances are you probably can't, because there is no real thought process. You just know that it's green because you instantly recognize it. This is a classic example of system one thinking. You could see something, you recognize it instantly. Now, on the AI side, the big example here is computer vision. Specifically, convolutional neural networks are designed to do this kind of perception very well. Seeing an object and very rapidly recognizing what it is. These networks, you, you, they cannot explain why they came up with an answer, but they can do their job very well and very rapidly. And this is important for obvious reasons. They've been, you know, widely used. Uh, but this is clearly system one thinking. So let's look at system two. Same circle, but let me say I tell you the diameter of the circle is four and the area is greater than 13. Okay, so, you know, well, how do we go through this? Well, you're going to be like, okay, well... You know, uh, the radius is going to be 4 over 2, which equals 2, and then the area equals pi r squared, you know, which is going to be 4 times pi. Um, and so this is going to be, you know, a little bit less than uh, 13. And so going through all that process and how you think of it, you know, most of you aren't going to take are you know, are going to take a little bit longer to think about this than these instant recognition tasks. And it's not about how good you are at math or how quickly uh, you can do these things. It's just, does this take you longer than kind of the instantaneous result of that is green, that is a circle? Can you explain your answer? So likely the case is going to be yes, because there was a series of steps you had to work through to get your answer. And so these are things that characterize system two. So it's slow, but it requires a reasoning process, and associated with that is an explanation. So a great example uh, that you encounter in your everyday life of an AI system that does this is your GPS. 
Most GPS systems use an algorithm called A star that step by step figures out how you get from point A to point B and based on the optimization criteria you specified in the GPS system. If you're optimizing for you know, taking only buses or driving or fuel or cost if you're using you know, a, a rideshare service. All those things is taken into account for. So bringing this back to an agent, one of the reasons that we drew our agent in these lectures with a separate perception and reasoning system is because of the system one, system two dichotomy. Because we could see a lot of where the recent advances in AI has been, has actually been in the area of perception, machine learning, deep learning in particular. Large neural networks trained on data can instantly provide results, results that are often very good, but the results are essentially imitating the training data it's seen over and over. And just like the fact that you could recognize the circle I showed on the previous slide was green, that's likely because over and over again, your parents pointed at green things. They said, that is green, that is green, that is green. And after a while of hearing them point to green things, or seeing them point to green things and say the word green, uh, you as a toddler started to say, oh, that's green. Neural networks are essentially doing the same thing. Based on uh, a lot of training data, they can then mimic that and rapidly perceive. But you can, of course, see that a parent of a toddler can't point at a bunch of solutions to a calculus problem and expect that toddler to learn calculus that way. And this is where a lot of failure in deep learning occurs, is that problems that require you know, reasoning over here they're not well suited for. And this is where things, uh, you know, like I talked about path planning, A star algorithm is still what's widely used there. Uh, you also have things like theorem provers that are used in mathematical use cases. And so that is, you know, why this dichotomy of system one versus system two, you know, has become very important in our field. So when we look at how the agent interacts with, it, with its environment, it perceives its surroundings and it takes an action. So system one and system two. System one is the fast perceptual system. How does it interpret sensory input? Again, you know, great example here, convolutional neural networks. System two, slow, how it reaches a conclusion based on an inference. And here are things like propositional logic that we also cover in this course um, are, are important things to consider. So that wraps it up for our System 1, System 2 lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Please stay tuned for more content.